dear students in today's session we are going to discuss about algae we all know how important algae are for us for animal kingdom and plant kingdom in general algae which are chlorophyll bearing simple in nature they are thalloid autotrophic and largely aquatic what do we mean by these terms if i say algae are chlorophyll bearing that means they have chlorophyll and if they have chlorophyll that means they will help in photosynthesis or they will do photosynthesis and if they are doing photosynthesis they are definitely fixing carbon dioxide and evolving oxygen as we know that algae are mostly aquatic that means they are making dissolved oxygen around them increasing in amount all the time and that will help all the aquatic animals whether freshwater animals or marine water animals or sea animals so that is the advantage of algae being chlorophyll bearing they are simple in nature that means their own structure is so simple that for maintaining their own structure they don't need lot of energy from their surrounding so they are giving energy in form of oxygen to the surrounding and they are not consuming that much they are thalloid that means structural details are not there like trees have leaves and stem and root and fruit birds those kind of differentiation of structures are not there it is just a thalloid structure again the maintenance the physiological maintenance becomes easier that means input is less but output is more which is required for the surrounding autotrophic they make their own food it is very natural if they have chlorophyll they are making their own food so being autotrophic they are not consuming anything they are making food for themselves and for the surrounding again for other animals and for other plants algae are largely aquatic they are found in fresh water in marine water mostly sometimes if they are not in water they are near water maybe at sea shore maybe near river or at least in a moist place where there is water availability is more than otherwise so they are normally called that they are aquatic so this is about algae in general now we come into details now let us understand how reproduction takes place in algae algae by nature are simple structures so vegetative reproduction can take place by simple fragmentation of course in algae we find vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction and also sexual reproduction but by being simple in nature it can be vegetative by fragmentation means if a small part of algae breaks out from the parent body it will develop into full algae this is simple regeneration kind of situation children try to appreciate that these lower organisms have capacity of regeneration which we have almost lost after having so much of evolution in our body of course if there is small cut by knife or blade on your finger the cells will regenerate and your finger will look normal after some time but if somebody loses one full finger it is not going to grow again and that finger which has come out from the body or cut from the body is not going to grow into full hand or full individual that means our capacity of regeneration or vegetative growth is much reduced compared to these primitive organisms or lower organisms so this particular aspect is used by algae for even reproduction so that is called vegetative reproduction they can also undergo asexual reproduction by way of producing spores and these spores in this case are also known as 
zoospores. Then some algae can undergo sexual reproduction and if it is sexual reproduction then definitely gametes should be produced and there should be fusion of two gametes to produce and the organism of the same kind. Coming to sexuality, we know that we the human or the mammals are highly evolved and we are good example of sexual reproduction, gamete formation. But this sexuality started as early as algae in case of plant kingdom and as early as paramecium in case of animal kingdom. That means right in the beginning of origin of life, when primitive organisms were made, the plant and the animals, even they tried to exhibit sexuality, whether it worked that perfectly or not is another question. So sexual reproduction is quite dominant in different categories of algae and they produce gametes which may be motile, may not be motile, may be similar type, may be different type. Maybe one is bigger, other is smaller, maybe they have one flagella or two flagella. All those variations may be there, but sexual reproduction is possible in algae and it takes place in algae. We are now discussing about gametes. Since for sexual reproduction we need gametes, so let us see how many kinds of gametes we find in algae. They fall in three categories depending upon their size, their motility and other characteristics. Isogamous, isogamous mode will mean that gametes are of the similar size and similar shape and of course they will fuse to make the new organism and these kind of gametes will come in the category of isogamous and isogamous as the term indicates the gametes are not identical, they do not look alike, they are not similar in size or shape and still they will fuse and make the new individual. Oogamous is a situation where one gamete is very big in size and non motile and other gamete is very small in size but motile and they fuse undergo sexual reproduction and produce the new individual. So in variety of algae, in different kinds of algae, we have different mode of sexual reproduction which may be isogamous, and isogamous or oogamous and in some of the categories we may have more than one type available. So this is about the gamete and also in this slide you can see Chlamydomonas with two flagella and also you can see volvox of course it is volvox colony because volvox is found in a colonial form. One more point which I would like to add here is that isogamous kind of gametes are more common in Chlamydomonas and Spirogyra whereas anisogamous is common in some species of Chlamydomonas and oogamous is normally found in volvox and fucus. Of course, there will be more examples as well. We proceed further. If we classify the algae, there are three classes in algae and they are named green algae, brown algae and red algae. The first one which I would like to discuss with you is chlorophyce and it is also known as green algae. It has green pigment chlorophyll and especially chlorophyll A and B. It is very very green in color and hence involved in photosynthesis in a very nice way. As I have told you earlier also children that algae are doing important job of fixing carbon dioxide and producing lot of oxygen in the surrounding for being used by other animals living in water. That means aquatic animals, freshwater animals and seawater animals. Now this particular class of algae 
chlorophycy which is also known as green algae has chlorophyll a and b reproduction it can undergo by vegetative reproduction by fragmentation because normally it has fragments it can be having simple fragments at the same time it can be highly branched depending upon different species of algae in this particular category so vegetative reproduction is predominant asexual reproduction is possible by production of zoospores which are flagellated if zoospore is flagellated that means they are motile so we can say that asexual reproduction is by motile zoospores and sexual reproduction in some species is there isogamous or in some species an isogamous or in some other species oogamous good examples of class chlorophycy are volvox chlamydomonas cara spirogyra and eulothrix now we come to the second class of algae pheophycy this is also known as brown algae and it is also quite predominant in nature and does some very important things for us it has chlorophyll a and c and also it has carotene and xanthophyll that means it has many kind of pigments for photosynthesis and hence is participating richly in photosynthesis as far as reproduction in pheophycy is concerned it can be vegetative by fragmentation it may be asexual by production of zoospores which are now biflagellate in this particular case and also motile and sexual reproduction will be either isogamous or an isogamous or oogamous in different concerned species good example of pheophycy are laminaria fucus dictyota ectocarpus and sargassum now we come to third class of algae and that is rhodophycy which is very commonly known as red algae because it has red pigment of course it also does photosynthesis and it looks very red wherever it is present it has vegetative reproduction by fragmentation and asexual reproduction by way of producing spores which are non motile so please children remember that in this case asexual reproduction is by non motile spores and sexual reproduction is there and it is also by non motile gametes but thing to appreciate is that all the three kinds of reproduction are found in this particular class also called rhodophycy the good examples of rhodophycy are porphyra very famous kind of example polysiphonia and gelelium so children in today's session we have discussed about algae about nature of algae about their photosynthetic capability vegetative asexual sexual reproduction and also different classes of algae like chlorophycy pheophycy and rhodophycy with this we come to the end of this session thank you Thank you.